It's a nasty one out there. Shop Dog Rex is kind of chilling on the warm floor. When I built the shop, I put in-floor heating here, and it's on right now. That floor is nice and toasty warm, and he likes it. Anyways, we have a little bit of a something to look at. One of these things came in the mail. Uh, let me get you all set up here. We're going to open this box up and see what's inside. I, uh, I use my track saw to break down big sheet goods and that type of thing. Uh, this thing connects with my DeWalt vacuum cleaner. And it would be much easier just to rip it outside and throw up a couple saw horses, break everything down, bring it back in, rather than trying to run extension cords and that type of thing. Anyways, give me a second and uh, let's uh, tear into this little uh, box of wonders. All right, I got y'all set up here. So this is the DeWalt FlexVolt brushless track saw. Uh, exact model number is a DCS520T1. I don't know how they come up with these numbers. It's goofy. Anyways, it's a T-Stack compatible kit. Uh, it comes with the box. And uh, I'll admit, I did cut the tape on that already. But let's see how this thing works here. Got it from Mississauga Hardware. I think it was about 650 with something, some other deal with free shipping and other stuff and a certain percentage off for uh, Black Friday and Easter Monday and Christmas and whatever holiday we all combined. So, okay. So, again, it comes in a standard large tea stack container. Let me get a bigger one, empty one, and see if it's the same. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So they just have one of these things. I guess they have a, I don't know, an insert or something for it. I'll figure it out. I'll have to, would have been nice if they had a, done that up. That would have been cool. Like, you know, track saw or, I don't know, would have been nice. And the shop dog's in the stuff already. Okay, so let's get into her here. Okay, that's just a zip tie. Nothing important there. The DeWalt T-Stack Guaranteed Tough little pamphlet. Yeah, go on. Come on. Ah, never mind. Okay. So, what do we got here? Ooh, an instruction manual. I will be perusing this all night long. Probably up till three or four, whatever. Okay. So if we look at it in here, it's actually a nice little setup. Looks pretty straightforward. We got the uh, some more instructions. I'll cut this without cutting the overmolding off. Let's see. <coughs> Sheesh, that's one strong zip tie. Or I'm just weak with my left hand. What do we got here? Well, it just kind of gives you a quick run of the mill thing. Ah, that's more like it. Simple pictures. I like it. Better than a big instruction manual I'm never going to read. Okay, so up in the corner we have what looks like the battery. Charger. That looks like a quick charger. Let's pull the uh, tracks out. Yeah, it comes out with not too many problems. These things are hefty. They are a bit of a beast. Okay. Oh, so it looks like they have some type of polystyrene or poly something, little beads, but in black, kind of doing everything up there. Let's pull the battery. I think this is a, dang it, it's wedged in there. Good. Okay, we got a six amp hour flexible battery with its little doodly on the top in a bag. Hopefully this is better than the last flexible I got. I had one of them die. That was pretty crappy. Okay, yeah, it doesn't look like it's been used or anything. Standard flex volt. Yeah, of course we'll have to remove before use. Well, I don't think you can use it without removing it, so kind of self-explanatory. Anyways, let's see. Yeah, we got one one bar on the on the battery, so I'll have to throw it on the charger. 
I do like the quick charge batteries a little bit better. Uh, or the quick charger chargers? Quick battery charger? I don't know, whatever. Uh, you know, when you're using bigger batteries like this stuff, it is nice. Like, you know, some of the 9 amp hours, it's nice to be able to charge them in like an hour or less. Uh, whereas a regular charger, it could be several hours waiting for that. And it does come with a DCB 1118. Uh, this is a quick charger, fast charger. So that's great. Um, I've got two already. This is the third one. I'll have to find another one with another tool or something. And I'll have four and then I can really crank the batteries through. I use the uh, flex, volt, uh, flex volt batteries for my lawnmower. And I got a big yard. So actually they really do come in handy uh, having the extra voltage. Although they're starting to make some of the non-flex volt bigger as well. This would be, that would be much easier. So, yeah, battery fits right in there. Does it fit on this side? No, nope, no, nope. it looks like it's just for one battery there. Doesn't look like you get to put two in there. And, yeah, it's, this, uh, this stuff is held in by those little tabs on the side, so... Oh, good. It's not going to just flop out. I like it. Let's get the zip tie off of there. Sorry, guys. I'm just bumbling around a little bit. It's a nasty cold day outside. And uh, there's nothing else for me to do. I don't feel like shoveling snow because it's just going to blow in again. Let's get you a little closer here so I don't have to reach over. Standard sort of setup here. Uh... Yep, so trigger lock up here. Obviously, that's where your battery's gonna go. Okay, we got a Allen key for changing uh, blades. That would appear to be your speed selector. Ooh, it goes to seven. I think the other one only goes to five or something like that. I'll have to get it out. And the more important thing, and this was I wasn't 100% sure, but what does this do? It lets you use the Festool tracks. That is such a handy feature because, you know, a lot of the Festool, uh, Makita, I think Triton as well, uh, they, they use a, a, the larger on, on the one side of it. Uh, it's nice that you're able to use this kind of saw with that type of track. That is really, really handy. Looks like there's some kind of guide here at the back. I wonder what that could be for. I don't know. Maybe I should read the instructions. Maybe I shouldn't. Oh, here we go. Here's the uh, tilt mechanism. Ah, one on each side. Tilts away. Feels like there's a bit of a... No, there's no indent at... Uh, I thought might, there might be a, a, an indent in about 45, but not really. Uh, nice back to zero. I'm probably going to get the uh, engineer square out and just make sure. Yeah, you got to do both. There is a bit of flex in there. So if both aren't done up, you're not guaranteed to have a, a good cut. What else we got here? Oh, okay. This is the uh, sort of lock mechanism. Or I think when you're changing the blade and that type of thing. The thing I'd really like to see them do is to have a um, a little clip-in thing. I'll probably go on Thingiverse and see if they have one to 3D print. But just just to improve dust collection, just something that would clip in there. Because I know you got to have the hole for uh, changing the blade out rather than having to take all the, the entire dust, shoot, dust side shoot part off. But uh, pretty good that way. And it should be that as soon as you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it must be a spindle lock. Let's, let's check it. Again, there's no battery. I'm safe. Yeah, that's a lock. Okay. And as soon as you, as soon as you press that, it's good to go again. Well, maybe not. I'm screwing everything up here. 
Oh yeah, okay. So you gotta press this thumb lever up. So that, that locks it down. Press that up, it releases over here. So that's a lock for the uh, spindle and everything. It has the same kind of feeling as the uh, recorded version. Um, some of them will will tilt down. Uh, the Fest tool has that tilt motion. This one is kind of like a, gl a glide and a push. I'm used to the DeWalt, so that's good that way. Let's do something silly, and uh, we're going to throw a battery on there. There we go. It's in there. I'm not going to push down. I don't want to damage my uh, tabletop here, but let's just give it a little, a little squeeze. Oh, ooh, I like that. Let's move her down to one. Put her back up in the middle somewhere. Let's <laughs> crank her to full. That's definitely got some power to it. You can kind of feel like a little bit of a kick with that. Okay. That's just a quick unboxing. You know, kind of bumbling around here. Uh, just having a look at it. The one thing I've always found, and you'll see it right here, this is a little gad, little part to adjust how tight it is on the track. Make sure it's nice and snug and there's no wiggle so you get a nice clean cut. The waltz are always, you always need a like an Allen wrench or a, or a flat bladed screwdriver. There's one on this side too. Again, just to, uh, you know, adjust for the track. The challenge is when you go from using Festool to a DeWalt track, DeWalt has the uh, spline in the middle there. Uh, Festool is on the outside. Uh, Shop Dog thinks he's going to operate the camera tonight. Sorry about the bouncing. Uh, you have to readjust this. So that's a little bit of a pain in the patootie. Not a great fan of that part, but whatever. How does this work? This is the... Uh, Thickness guide here, so from zero to two inches. Yeah, that'll work. And yeah, that just keeps it from going too far. Because of the angular motion, uh, the, these aren't exact gradations. So it's a little bit, you know, wider apart here than it is down there. I'm used to that half inch. That should work good. I'm happy. It looks really good. I'm going to calibrate it, make sure it's at a, a proper 90 degrees. Probably take the dust shield off and, and confirm that, that this is uh, this is all good there. But hey, that's what it looks like on the inside. Kind of a neat kit. I got my uh, T-Stack holder already and set up there anyway. So it's going to fit right in. And uh, it's also got the Bluetooth link, which I think uh, can operate some of the vacuums. Uh, the mini one, I believe. Uh, so that's kind of a neat thing as well. And there we go. Yep, the, the dust hose can change positions. It does have that ring for for the lock-on with the uh, the new uh, dust hoses from some of the DeWalt HepaVacs. Hoping this is going to be a lot of fun. I might give it a go on the weekend, do a few little things with it, test it out. If it's good, I'll let you know. If it's really horrible, I'll certainly let you know. If it's meh, and it's just as good as the corded, but without cords, I'm hoping that's all it's going to be. Have a great one, everyone. Go grab your tools. Go make a mess. Go make something. Have some fun. Enjoy life. And uh, I'll poke around the shop, see what else we got. See if it interests anybody. <laughs>